Well, look, I'm very pleased to be here to, to meet with you all. And I come, so to speak, as a former college stroke school principal who's been engaged with examination boards for many years. Um, for some time, I was a so-called syndic of the University of Cambridge Local Examination Syndicate. And the syndics are the governors of the whole of o o Cambridge assessment, including OCR, including Cambridge International, and including Cambridge English, which used to be called ESOL. And when I stopped being a college principal, I stepped down from being a syndic, um, but I was asked if I would take on a role with Cambridge International as an advisor, um, but also uh, somebody who could go out to the different countries, meet school heads and, and uh, teachers and students, and feed back to Cambridge uh, any, con any concerns and any positive um, responses that, that I got. So, so that's me. Um, I, I was the principal of Farnborough Sixth Form College, which, as um, Simon said, was the largest UK sixth form college. Um, we, ha we have three and a half thousand students, all aged 16 to 19. Um, and the college was extremely popular. So, so um, we'd get as we'd get a whole college full, so to speak, of applications every year, although we could only take half of them uh, each year. And um, in September 2010, which was, so to speak, the year that, that I left, um, when we opened the applications process at 7 a.m. on Friday the 14th of November, or whatever date it was, um, we had 2,000 applications within the first 35 seconds. So people were very eager to come to the college. And, and uh, we said that we would consider the applications in the order in which they arrived. But actually, the technology um, couldn't quite measure the speed of these applications as they came in. Anyway, um, so when you get 3,500 youngsters coming, or, or, or 1,800 coming per year, then it's sort of very important to enable them to understand the ethos of the college to enable success uh, in, their, in their examination so that they don't bring with them and to discourage them from bringing with them the baggage of their understanding of what school was in their previous institutions. So that was quite a challenge. Um, but we became the UK's largest provider of undergraduates because we had such a lot of them. And uh, most of our youngsters would move on to higher education. So that's the sort of context in which I want to speak. I mean, that's the background from which I want to speak. And I've got uh, two parts. So I think we've got uh, coffee in between. Um, so the first thing, I, I just want to explore some of those issues around the UK uh, educational landscape, because it's very turbulent uh, back there. Um, I want to say a little bit about the debate around the world, our commitments and principles, um, something about the current uh, review that's taking place, um, and uh, I've, I've, I've described it as the linear approach of Cambridge. Um, so that's the first part, and in the second part, I want to move on really to think about the context within which we develop the learning competencies which enable young people both to get into university but also to get on in life. Um, because it's a very different world from how it was when most of us uh, were at school, I guess. So um, uh, every year we have a Queen's speech where the Queen comes along uh, to Parliament and she announces what it is that her government is going to do. And uh, in, this, in this Queen's speech, which was uh, in, in earlier this year, in uh, uh, 2013, uh, she was speaking about the exam changes, a new national curriculum, a key change in the UK now. It will be compulsory look for pupils in the older years of primary school to learn a language. And that's a very significant change from the traditional UK position 
which was that everybody spoke English so they didn't have to learn a foreign language. Um, uh, and at the bottom there, look, changes to A-levels also involve a move to exams being taken at the end of two years' study. Of course, it's not the Queen who determines what it is, but it's this man, who is Michael Gove. And um, uh, uh, so in, in, the, in the newspapers, this is from the Sunday Times, um, Gove plots an A-level exam revolution. Um, and then immediately, the universities attack the A-level reforms. Uh, these are this Daily Telegraph, the independent universities fight A-level, the Times, Gove's reforms opposed by the Russell Group. And um, uh, we're talking really, I suppose, here about a political will being placed upon the UK education system. And... Um, uh, I mean, change is sufficiently regular at the moment for it to be uncertain about how these will pan out into the future. But, but the, all the universities have been opposing the splitting of the, uh, uh, no, the bringing together of the AS and the, and the A2 into a single examination at the end of two years. Um, and of course, there's a further issue in the UK because um, universities in the UK, whereas in the past they've been uh, encouraged to restrict the number of students that they can admit, we've now got an issue which, we've, we've, which is called the ABB rule. And uh, the ABB rule means that universities across the country, if they, if they have more applicants with grades A, B, B in their A levels than they had originally intended to take, they can take them at no uh, penalty. So growth in some universities is now happening because they're mopping up, they're, they're attracting uh, the youngsters with grades A, B, B or higher. Um, uh, and of course they're taking them away from the universities which had already agreed to take them, uh, if the student so chooses, they can move on to what they might think would be a better choice university. But um, so, so this was from the Sunday Times um, just a few weeks ago. Uh, some of those, so to speak, lower universities, one might call them, are, are now very happily taking youngsters with very low grades. And of course, uh, that's been translated into, um, so what's going to happen to the youngsters with, with very low A-level grades when they move into the professional world because it, it is being suggested they, they, they won't be adequately prepared as professionals because they won't be bright enough, I guess, is what they're saying, in order to be undertake the work. And, and all sorts of um, offers were being made. Uh, engineering, to ease, fine, uh, in some universities. Um, even architecture, two E's and an E at AS would get you in in some universities. So the question is, so what sort of architects will they produce at the end of the, at the, end of the day? So um, lots of change, lots of risk around. And then uh, this is from the Times of the 14th of August, just about a month ago. Um, private pupils may sit the international A-levels. And uh, here, this story uh, relates to Andrew Grant, who's the head teacher, the, the head teacher of St Albans School. He was chairman of the uh, HMC, um, and he's saying uh, they are considering moving to Cambridge International Examinations uh, because of the turbulence that they consider around the current A-level provision. And um, Ed Elliott from the Perth School saying the same thing. There's another quote in another newspaper from Bernard Trafford at Newcastle. A lot of schools, are, 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 they don't want to engage in the turbulence. So they're looking to take the Cambridge International A-levels, which they can because they're independent schools, um, uh, in the UK. So jolly interesting changes going on. Um, uh, and then uh, uh, 
dear old Mike, Michael Gove is my MP, so I sort of see him from time to time. And he's very eager to proceed very quickly. But um, Ofqual are now saying, hey, you can't go quite as quickly as, as, you, as you want. So slowing down. If you go on the Ofqual website, as you know, um, there's a lot of stuff on there about A-level reform, what changes are happening, um, and, and Ofqual, so to speak, are running to keep up sides with Michael Gove, who wants everything to go much faster. So what we're dealing with is, um, some would say, uh, strong personal beliefs of a single man, uh, uh, shared by the Prime Minister, and all of these were worked up in opposition. Um, a strong drive to create more free schools in the UK, these sort of independent, publicly funded schools. Um, and, and one could say that this move is broadly aligned with the educational right wing in the States. Um, content over, is favoured over application, and uh, core skills, though very important, particularly English and maths. And, um, and a couple of books here uh, which reflect um, that approach in, in the States. So the government views about exams in the UK, um, and of course this doesn't apply to the Cambridge International Examinations. I've been talking about the regulated examinations, and the government feels that standards have slipped over time. Uh, assessment should be less frequent and more demanding. Uh, wish for a greater rigour to be undertaken in the UK examinations. Um, more synoptic exam questions um, and, I mean, a clear dislike of the modular approach. Now, that is shared by the universities in the UK. Many of the universities say that the modular system which exists at the moment is uh, encouraging young people to think of the subjects in terms of bite-sized chunks. And so the sense of coherence across a subject, some universities are saying, is not being achieved through the modular structure. Um, and, and, and that ability constantly to resit is an issue. Um, and my own view on that is that uh, as a head teacher, I quite liked an opportunity for a reset for youngsters. But what I felt was that they were able to do it without any risk to themselves. And we'd get some youngsters in, in the modular system who'd have a score of, I don't know, 81 in a module out of 100, and they'd retake it to see if they could get 87. Now, and, and if they got 79, the highest one counted. My own view is that if, if youngsters wanted to resit, actually their score should be reduced to zero and that there's a risk, therefore, in taking a resit. Um, however, that's not what uh, happened. And I, my own view is that had Gove actually gone for that, I think he might have retained the AS and the A2 structure. Uh, but anyway, so this is, what, um, this is what's going on in the UK. Uh, he, 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 he wanted to have a separate EBC qualification, and he also wanted to move to subjects being examined only by one examination board, but he's had to pull back from that. But he is reforming all GCSEs. And Michael Gove, uh, oh, I thought I was going to come up with a quote there from him, but I, uh, it's not there, it may come. Uh, linear qualifications with exams at the end, as little internal assessment, end tiering, new GCSEs in core subjects in schools, um, but that's been uh, delayed by 12 months because Ofqual are saying, look, we can't just do it at this speed. Um, so uh, the quote that I thought I was going to pull up there was from Michael Gove in, in, uh, in Parliament uh, just 12 months ago where he was being asked about his reforms to GCSE, and he particularly said, I would recommend that schools take the IGCSE 
as a preparation for the reforms which we're planning to introduce. And, and um, uh, for IGCSE in the current year, there's been a huge increase in the number of schools in the UK opting to take the IGCSE. Not only the independent schools, but the state schools as well, because that's the direction in which Michael Gove is going. So um, just a quick revision on a little bit of an exercise for you in a minute, because um, it's a long-standing qualification. Uh, Cambridge, of course, has been, is the only university which now is associated with schools examinations in the UK. And as, as, as um, Simon said, it's a department of the University of Cambridge, the University of Cambridge Local Examination Syndicate. Um, but uh, in 1986, we had uh, an end to norm referencing. And um, I don't know whether you will recall back that far. Some of you are old enough. Uh, um, but on your sheets, you've got this slide. And uh, it's got some subjects. And it's got some scores, final percentage scores. And what I want you to do now is to assign grades using your skill and judgment, your knowledge, assign grades to each of these scores for each of those subjects. I don't want you to spend a long time on doing it, but I'm not going to carry on until all of you have done it. So you need to find the pen which is in your pack and... Uh, and I'm just going to step down from here, and I'm just going to go around to check you're doing it. Um, so that's very important. Well, this table hasn't done any yet. I've done one. Oh, you've done one? Okay. Well, you've only got a few minutes less than that. This is A-level, grades, and I want you to attach a grade to each of those scores going across. You can do that really very quickly. Yep. Just using your skill, knowledge, judgment. What do you think those scores would have been worth in 1986? Oh, 1984, maybe it was, actually. Yep. These were probably my grades. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? Have you assigned grades to all of them? You haven't done any yet. <laughs> come, come on. <laughs> this is a slow table. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing it in different ways. Okay. What are you doing? We're just putting a range. A stars, A's, uh, okay, and but uh, and I, just I want some. You have to do what the teacher says. Okay, I want grades. I want I'm thinking about. <laughs> Don't spend too long thinking. Just do it. Exactly. Has anyone finished? Excellent. Well done. Sorry? They all failed. <laughs> Here's a very tough examiner. He said they've all failed. 72% in chemistry has failed. No, it's B. B. All right. OK, and what about this one? 63. What's he going to get? C. I think, what, which one? This one? No, you see, you've got chemistry 72, 63. Yeah, see, each are great.
Well, um, were, were you my class, I would be keeping you in until you'd finished. But uh, because we've got coffee prepared, um, we're going to have to move on. So, um, tell me, can I have some suggestions for chemistry? We've got 72, 63, 60 and 54. What, what do you think the 72 would have achieved? Grade? A. A. B. 70, 70, 80 to 70%, 70% will be A. A. Okay. We, okay. Well, it's somewhere between A and B. I, I'm, I'm hearing A and B. Yeah. Okay. What about the 63? C. Okay. 60? D? And some C. Okay. And 54? E. Okay. Well, let's see. That 70, chemistry, 72 was a B. So 63 was a B. 60 was a C. So D. And 54 was a D. They were the top, for chemistry, the top and the bottom mark for grade B and grade D. What about uh, biology? B. B. D and D. This was under the old norm reference system, which many of us will have taken. Let's look at history. 57, with a B. 53? B. You've got it. 48? Oh. D. D. And 44? D. In fact, for all of those subjects, I've put out the top B and the bottom B, and the top D and the bottom D. But look at the chemistry result. If you got 63, you got a B. If you got 60, you got a D. So you went from a B to a D in just three marks, which, which was the... Yeah, anyway, so, and why? Well, the old-style norm reference said that 10% um, uh, would get an A, 15% a B, 10% an E, and, and you could put the marks along the bottom if... if um, I mean, ideally, the E was 40%. Uh, and, and so that's how they did the scores. But of course, um, the reality was that although it's supposed to be a normal distribution, it, it rarely was. And so if you had, I can't point, but uh, I'm going to go down here look and just say, if, if your norm reference distribution was such that uh, the C appeared near the top of the peak, it could only contain 10% of the cohort. So it became very narrow. And that was why we moved to criterion referencing. And Cambridge does criterion referencing rather better than does uh, the UK system. Because under criterion referencing, as you know, um, you get component scores, you add those up, and that, in this case, would come to 347 out of 400. Um, and what Cambridge then does is to say, um, by, by examiner judgment, we think a grade A is at 315. And they also look, I mean, and it will be different for every subject and different each year. And they also look at what a B should be. And they draw the line. They then draw the line at what they think is the pass mark, E. And then they, they subtract 155 from 284, and you get, I think, 129. And you divide that by three. So that gives you, oh, your, <laughs> that gives you your grade boundaries for C and D. And for the A star, they go as high above an A as a B is below it. And that's how they get the A star. So that's looked just 
uh, um, a quick revision, and, and maybe some of you, you know, didn't realize that, uh, about the end of norm referencing and the beginning of criterion referencing. So, so it is, I think, a fairer system. Um, OK, uh, uh, AS was introduced, modularized, consultations by Ofqual on option, and these decisions were announced just a few months ago that uh, keep AS but as a standalone qualification in the, in the UK system, A level to have a linear assessment, Russell Group of Universities to provide advice on content, and um, uh, there's been a relaxation in the timetable for change. But first teaching um, uh, now in 2015. So they're starting teaching it now. Oh, ah. Uh, I just need now to go to my hyperlink here. So what does it mean for Cambridge? Well, the programme of change does not apply to international examinations. That's the important thing. Some changes to the exams uh, are already among the options available in, in IGCSE. And here's the Gove quote. I would encourage all schools to consider how the IGCSE might be appropriate preparation for the changes we hope to introduce. And it was that statement which resulted in a whole pile of schools in the UK coming over to the Cambridge IGCSE. Um, I have to say that the, the, uh, uh, the Cambridge um, Tim Oates, who's director of research in Cambridge assessment, chaired the government committee looking at the review of the national curriculum. Kate Pretty, who is the principal of Homerton College in Cambridge, pro vice chancellor of the University of Cambridge, is a key advisor to Michael Gove. Um, so Cambridge is well in with the changes. But the issue of comparability in standards and international exam is critical. And that's in answer to the earlier question. That's why the University of Cambridge is keeping such a close eye on it. And look, I have heard it said that some people choose not to do the Cambridge A-level because it's harder than the modular option. And the modular option is now dead. Because uh, I, it would be my view, 